Yes, 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 yes. You tuning to another episode of the Cast Offs Podcast. It's your boy Busy. Got a nice special guest here today. Uh, it's Kelly Lavelle. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure. This is a, it's meant to it's meant to happen, isn't it? It's supposed it should have happened a long time ago. Obviously, you've been a bit away. I've been busy, busy is busy, and, and I think this is now the perfect time to do this. Yeah. Um, the reason I've got Kelly um, over today is not to talk about herself, um, obviously, uh, but it's to talk about a couple of things she's done um, that I've known she's been doing for years now, which I'm very proud um, of what she's done and how far it's gone. Uh, we have a lot of topics to touch about uh, or touch on, and so this is going to be a great episode. Um, first of all, uh, we are now on, for YouTube viewers, we are going to be on a new channel, which is youtube.com, at the cast of pod, same thing on Instagram as well. We're moving everything to a new channel now. So, Kels, we, um, I got you here to talk about, you have a company, a firm, organization, a gang, so to speak, called We Do Ethical. And I, I, I obviously, I know about it. I just want you to tell us what. Um, what we do ethical do. Yeah, well. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, what we do do. I suppose in a nutshell, I'd say that we do projects yeah. that help people, planet and animals. Okay. And um, when did that start? Well, back in 2009, actually, whilst I was studying at university. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be yesterday, doesn't it? I know. Crazy. <laughs> and um, what, what inspired you to start that? Well... The subject I was studying was fashion, so I did a BA Honours in Fashion Studies. Yeah. And, you know, back in 2009, there wasn't very much awareness around about where things are made and how mm-hmm. things are made. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, I was studying that subject and learnt these things, mm-hmm. and I was shocked. <laughs> um, what I discovered was that fashion had this, like, dirty secret. Okay. And behind the scenes and the glitz and the glamour, there's actually a lot of violations you know, human right violations, yeah, child yeah. labour violations. Yeah, especially that. And also the way that they manufacture the clothing as uh-huh. well. Yeah, it's child so, labour and slavery and involved, yeah. Also the pollution, you know, the pesticides and insecticides that they use on crops, <clears throat> such as cotton, mm-hmm. you know, that, that water goes untreated back into rivers and streams and oceans and that has, you know, catastrophic effects for Indigenous people living yeah. in the area. Yeah. Um, creates algae blooms, all sorts of uh, issues. So I really didn't agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I loved fashion and I thought, oh God, I've paid all this money. I'm on this course. What am I going to do? <laughs> so you just wanted to create awareness and do your bit, so to speak, in, in trying to right the wrongs of the, the fashion industry that which you are in and trying to make, um, obviously, hopefully the big fashion brands be more, um, more accountable with where they source their products, how they do it, and how the product uh, producer manufacture it. Yeah. So um, I just thought, had I not studied this, I would keep buying these clothes without blind, knowing. Yeah. Which are technically stained by the sweat of child labourers, and yep. you know, yep. I really didn't. That didn't sit very well with me. Uh, <laughs> so there's got to be another way. And yeah. So what? What? what obviously, when 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 you started a deep dive into it, um, what did you find? I mean, give me a couple of examples of things you found that was, didn't that didn't sit right with you, and and what you what you try to do to change it. Well, I suppose <clears throat> child labour that yeah. was a really big one for me, mm-hmm. um, probably because my mum used to make me do six baskets of ironing <laughs> to earn my pocket money. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, it was it was really sad that yeah. I thought that there were you know children that were just five years old that were literally waking up sewing. Mm-hmm. And then sleeping on the floor next to their machine. Not going to school, I'm guessing, no, as well. Not playing. Not How many hours a day? You 24-7. Reckon? They literally sleep on the floor next to their sewing machine, wake up and get told to work, get a bit of food, and then they sleep on the floor next yeah. to their sewing machine. And, and, and in the, obviously, doing <laughs> Din, Din, Din research for this, where do you, what countries, I mean, we, we have to name them. I, I mean, I'm not saying they're doing it now, but at the time, what countries are very guilty of well, doing things like that. India, that's one of the biggest producing companies for yeah. fashion brands. Mm-hmm. And going back to your question, what we did about that was we responded to a really big disaster 
which actually did get international news coverage wow. because usually factory fires and things in India or collapsing Never. of buildings, yeah. it goes unreported, or it did back then. Yeah. But there was the Rana Plaza factory disaster wow. where over 1,300 people were killed, crushed to death in one day from the building no collapsing. Way. After they said, we don't want to go in there, there are giant cracks and they were forced to go in, otherwise they weren't going to get their money for their, you know, yeah. food for that week. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, ended up losing their lives. So basically, uh, the building was known not to be safe anyways. Yeah. Um, but they just kept ignoring it and just kept pu pushing people in there to do work. Yeah. It, child labor work or forced labor work. Mm, and exactly. then it, it happened. So this was the start of Fashion Revolution Day, it was called then. Yeah. It's now called Fashion Revolution Week. Oh, wow. And I was lucky enough to work with some of the founders mm -hmm. in the early days mm -hmm. and attend some of the, the events yeah. that we put on yeah. to raise awareness. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's sort of, you know, I've always tried to take a positive and creative approach mm -hmm. to these negative issues. Yeah, yeah. And I found that people resonate with that a lot more as well. Yeah. You know, if you say, don't shop here, don't do that, don't... It's, it's all very negative. Yeah, yeah. And also people don't like being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, with obviously that, that unfortunate incident happened. So what has been put in place since that happened to make sure it doesn't happen again? Or I'm hoping it hasn't happened again since then. Unfortunately, you know, countries have their own laws. Yeah. And we're very fortunate in England that health and safety is taken quite seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but... You know, I can't really comment on the policies of other countries because yeah, yeah. I don't know them inside out, if I'm honest with you. But yeah. I know that they aren't quite up to the standard that they, they should are in be. The UK, yeah, and be more responsible. So the only thing that can be done is just to keep pushing, create awareness. And um, yeah, well, essentially, business, any business is supply for demand. That's, that's so true. Yeah. We as consumers have that power to yeah. create that demand. So. If we don't buy clothes that are fast fashion... Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what they call it, fast fashion. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's the overconsumption of fashion and production of fashion, which is so fast mm -hmm. that they'll have sort of seven seasons in a year when really we've got two, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, every two weeks they're putting these new clothes that's on That's where the consumerism's coming in. It? It's literally just want to get people to buy new stuff all the time. Like yeah. you said, it used to be two seasons, three seasons max. It's yeah. seven seasons. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's insane. And more. <laughs> Which then adds to the pressure of obviously getting more products being manufactured at, at these places. Yeah. And they, they need more people Maybe at cheap labour uh, to do it as well uh, in unsafe environments as well. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it is, if we stop buying from them, yeah. Then that's what, so again, what people understand, especially corporations, what they, what they understand is money. Yeah. Uh, so KPIs. Exactly. They're up on the eco sales. Guess what? They're going to make more. Exactly. So if we, so <laughs> if, so us as consumers, if we then put pressure on the big fashion company or big manufacturing companies or whatever they do to stop um, getting their products from these places, then it, add, it then it's up to them then to pressure the people especially in the third world countries, not to do what they're doing. So it starts, it still starts from us and they're giving, empowering, giving that sense of empowerment to, okay, if, for example, let's say Busy Fashion L and INC was using cheap child labour to get the hoodies done, then if the consumers say, okay, we're not going to, we're going to stop using or buying Busy Fashion product, yeah. then at, then Busy INC, then we'll then have to then, because obviously I'm now looking at my, my bottom line is now, Money's not coming in because obviously people are not taking a stand. I can then put the pressure on. Oh, yeah, I see that. I see that. So it's still because if if the governments from those countries would not do something about it, it's still back to us. Yeah, money. Yeah, because we we create the demand in which they supply. Yeah. So if we change our buying behaviors, we can choose the change. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so our hashtag's always been "Be the change." Be the change. Yeah. You want to see in the world, mm -hmm. but you can actually choose the change, and you're in control of what you buy. Yeah. That's one thing we are in control mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. what we buy. So, so what types of buying behaviours can we change ourselves as consumers to help or aid with the, the cause of having um, a good, safe environment for people to work in? I think looking for logos, that's quite a good one. Okay. So if you look for, say, the fair trade logo mm -hmm. when you're buying, I don't know, your tea bags yeah, yeah, or your coffee. Yeah, yeah, I see that, yeah. It might be 20p more. 
but you know that that money is going to a family mm-hmm. that will be paid a decent working wage yeah. for the work they do yeah. instead of sort of, you know, sweatshop conditions. Yeah. Um, and also that solves child labour as well yeah. because then the families can afford to, you know, take their children, pay for their school fees mm-hmm. instead of sending them out to work to try. Yeah, and, yeah, you know. that is that's so true. So for, uh, to look, look for and identify... Um, I have seen it about in the, especially stuff in supermarkets as well. Yeah, so look, this carbon neutral logo, organic yeah. soil association logo. <laughs> there's the, the UK tractor farmer mm-hmm. logo. Yeah, you know, buying things that I suppose loaf is yeah. a good thing to remember. So L O A F, like a loaf of bread. So yeah, L O A F. So go on. What is Local, it yeah, organic, yeah, animal friendly, yeah, fair trade. That's so right, if you buy it? products yeah. that have got one or as many of those attributes that you can, yeah. you know that you're buying products with a purpose. Yeah, and you feel good inside as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because obviously one of the things that people always say, um, and it just, this might sound, sound, sound minor, I, I only buy free-range eggs. I'm going to use that as an example. Yeah. But obviously we know that getting the ones, um, the cheaper ones, obviously with the hens, being caged. C- caged and control is cheaper. Some people say, "Yeah, but it's like it's twenty, thirty p more." But I, and I say, "End." It's like so. It's it's a similar thing with that as well. It, it it's it doesn't cost. It it's not a it's not a lot to pay that extra, knowing that the, the, the whatever you're buying is being done properly. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think there's something to say as well about the health side. Mm-hmm. So, what's your health worth to you? Yeah. Yeah, that is You're true. You're buying a better product Priceless, yeah. that's better for your body yeah. as well as better for the planet or better for the animals mm-hmm. or, the, you know, the people that make that product. Yeah. So some people, I mean, even myself, I'll choose to buy certain products because of their health values. Yeah. And then some products I choose because of their ethical values. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a mixture there. So some people are vegan because of the health benefits. Yeah. They're not necessarily concerned about animal welfare. Yeah. So it depends on, you know, you as an individual and what your values are. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the world would be a very boring place if everyone was the same. But I've always said that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking to scrutinise people that eat meat or, you know, <laughs> you, you do what you want to do. Yeah. But just try and be a bit more conscious and mindful about the things you're buying, yeah. and where they're made mm-hmm. and how they're made. That is true. And one, what, other, what other things you've done are uh, We Do Ethical. Um, by the way, before I forget, it's wedoethical.org.org if you want to um, check that out. Um, they do great stuff on that. So what other things you've done with We Do Ethical? Um, let's start locally. Charity Begins at Home. And I, I've seen them, but I just obviously I'm going to pretend that I don't <laughs> know. So for, for the benefit of the viewers and listeners yeah. as well. Um what, what things have you done from the start of 2009? Um, let's go. And you don't have to remember them all because I know you've done a lot. What, yeah. what things stands out? Well, I suppose I started with my little brand, didn't I, called We Do Redo. I remember that. So I'd have, <laughs> have pop-up <laughs> workshops and stalls yeah. at festivals yep. and different shops and um, fashion shows. Yep. So and, and the fashion shows, way I know this, because I, I need to try and don't undersell this because you've done, you've done a lot. The fashion shows, where were you getting the clothing from? All ethical all ethical brands. There you and go. And this was back in, well, Bristol's Big Green Week yeah. is an event I worked on for the first two years. Mm-hmm. There wasn't really a lot going on in my hometown, so I had to sort of move outside of Bournemouth to yeah. get things going. Mm-hmm. Back then, I suppose it was all very new. I mean, fa- Ethical Fashion Forum only was founded in 2009. I was one of the founding partners for that wow. as well, supported that initiative. And that's grown and grown year on year now. Um, but Bristol's Big Green Week, I did the gala event for them. Mm-hmm. And they actually won the European Green Capital Award, which wow. was a very special Let's event. give you an applause there. <laughs> that's it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> but that was yeah, my very first one. And I had over 30 brands involved. Mm-hmm. And I literally (laughs) overkilled that (laughs) to the max. Like I teamed up the jewellery with every single look and the shoes and everything went. That's like a dream for you, isn't it? Obviously, uh, your expertise in fashion, your passion with obviously uh, sustainable products all just merged into one. Well, I wanted to show people that you can look good Mm -hmm. and feel good 
at the same time yeah. by buying products with a purpose yeah. and you don't have to compromise on aesthetics. Yeah. Like I found fashion that's just as fashionable as what you'd go and buy in Zara yeah. or whatever. But guess what? It's got that added value that it's made in the UK and, yeah. you know, people are paid decent wages or mm-hmm. it's made somewhere else, but also they were. So, you know, organic cottons, because if you think about it, as I studied fashion, the pattern pieces are there and you can just switch the fabric mm-hmm. to an organic fabric mm-hmm. and then the people that put the pieces together to yeah. make the item, you pay a decent living wage to. Yeah, exactly. It's not hard to solve. It's a no-brainer, really. Really? Yeah. But I understand the model and, like you say, the bottom line and mm-hmm. um, the markup in fashion is so large. Yeah. It's like 2.4, 2.7% markup, like 270%. Wow. That's, 270 that's the, that's the percent. profit margin they make. Jeez. So they can afford the to pay people the right <laughs> amount of money. There's no excuse, really, is there? Yeah, but because they don't have 270 percent markup. Yeah, that's, profit. Yeah, that's how they manage to do these big sales, like 50 percent off. Yeah, because they're still making money in it. Yeah. Yeah, they're still making 100 percent, even if they're doing 70 percent off. Jeez, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, the rag trade. It is, isn't it? So, yeah. um, I mean, you, you mentioned about obviously when you started, we do, um, we do redo. Um, there was nothing really going on in your hometown of Bournemouth, so you had to obviously extend your wings and and all. Um, when did you start noticing that? Okay, there's something happening in Bournemouth that we do, we redo, and we do ethical can now obviously jump on because charity begins at home, isn't it? Yeah. And then exp- when did that happen for you? When did you start saying, okay, something is happening here. Um, I'm excited. I can now do something in my hometown with what I'm passionate about. When, when, when well, did that happen for you? We did a, we put together an event. We created an event mm-hmm. ourselves. We made, made it happen ourselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Don't blame the dog. <laughs> um, yeah, so we created Bournemouth Fashion Weekend. Yeah. And we did this really nice. <laughs> yes, Frankie, come on here. Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got, we got Frankie doing Frankie yeah, stuff. We're going to get you on the camera so you can say hello to everyone. Oh, here's my There you go. We got my Frankie. <laughs> my, uh, my partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie's been restless in his attention, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh. Um, so, yeah, we created a warmer fashion weekend. Mm-hmm. It's a bit similar to what we did with Brist- Bristol's Big Green Week. Yeah. So kind of mimic that, but on a much smaller scale. All right, you, you started that with it. Oh, you, yeah. you went into partnership with a couple of our... Yeah. All right. Yeah, with one of my business leg- legacy partners I still work with today mm-hmm. as well. So they provide all the staging, yeah. lighting, everything Te- Who are they? LED <laughs> House. Big up LED House there. Ooh. LED, LED, LED. They've always supported everything I've done. Oh, that's you know, brilliant. Whether yeah. it's lending me a, a, what they call, projector to mm-hmm. go and do a talk at a university yeah. or college or wherever else oh that's brutal yeah. that's brutal so um let's go into um before we go into the i'm gonna ask so when is the we do ethical fashion line coming out then oh well mm. it's a bit of a conflict <laughs> it's a conflict of interest if i'm honest why well i work with a lot of designers mm-hmm. i know yeah to try and give them the right path yeah yeah mm-hmm. giving them a platform um i pref- i prefer sort of the promotional side okay um, obviously, I liked upcycling my own clothes mm-hmm. and recycling, and mm-hmm. that's how I where I started. That's the thing I was I was trying to get you to say the upcycle side of it. Uh, yeah, because um, I've seen you go and get stuff from certain places to upcycle. And do you want to go into that a bit and just tell us about what we can do, what we can do as well as individuals to upcycle? Yeah, I mean, yeah. anyone can do it. Yeah. And there's so many different things to inspire you online as well. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he's trying to get oh, on God, the Oh, oh right, God. He's just having a little laugh. Chilling. That's nice. <laughs> it's good aesthetic for the camera, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How many pots have a dog on the table? Love that. I'm glad you're dog friendly. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, I love dogs. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of different tutorials and things out there. I mean, I started off with ITV Fixes. They sort of show, shone a light on what I was doing mm-hmm. and came and filmed some of my tutorials yeah. and helped me get my first website going. Wow. And they asked me to come in and organise a fashion show, which went out on ITV.com, which actually I was interviewed by Caroline Flack on oh, that as well. Yeah. God rest her soul. Rest in peace, Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. She inspired me a lot that day, actually. She was just starting out and presenting. But, yeah, it was really, really good experience. Yeah. And 
I think having those opportunities to work with people that were on my course yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Remember Emma Graham? She showcased some of her things within that show. Mm -hmm. I took her with me to ITV. And, oh, wow. You know, I really enjoyed sort of supporting up and coming designers mm -hmm. and also, you know, established brands yeah. and using them in a fashion show. Yeah. Um, I've also done that with the Miss England project too. Because yeah, yeah. we're going to go into that yeah, as well. I wanted to get... 16 to 26 year olds you know plant that ethical seed yeah. in their mind yeah. for that yeah. awareness to grow okay but again in a positive and creative way let's mm -hmm. let's do a fashion show let's do a fun event yeah. let's not tell people not to buy this and that yeah. we'll just show them some other brands just educate them basically <laughs> isn't it yeah, yeah. Uh, there's an alternative to what you already know already have and a big thank you to our sponsor, Chica Lounge, which is a lovely cocktail bar in Westcliff, Bournemouth, for those who like to have a good time and be home early by 1am. With free parking, which is very rare for Bournemouth, they have something to suit your entertainment taste all week. From day parties to Latino nights to Afro beats and even quiz nights, this lovely venue is also available for private hire as it's perfect for birthdays, networking meetings, social meetups, fitness classes and comedy shows. Check in at their website, chicalounge.co.uk and their socials on Facebook and Instagram at Chica Lounge. And keeping us warm this winter, we have My Connected Home, who provide comprehensive domestic cover and finance for your boiler. We have to say thank you as they are one of our dedicated sponsors supporting the show. And My Connective Home actually provides brand new efficient boilers with affordable monthly finance. And if you can't afford to buy one right now, that's okay, because subject to approval and credit checks, they'll provide one for you. Just get in touch at myconnectedhomeuk.com or call 0345 057 3057. Okay, so we, 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 we do ethical... You have a thing about trees, tree planting to save the planet. Um, carbon neutral. Yep. Uh, I mean, Karim and I, we, we, we thought we knew what it was. Obviously, we don't. So can you educate us about that and what it, uh, and what it, it is about, basically? How we can get carbon neutral ourselves and uh, save the environment? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. You just look at your usage. <laughs> So, for instance, this studio, you could look at, you know, your energy bill mm -hmm. and that gives you your usage. It's going to be cheap, yeah. How, many, <laughs> <laughs> how many kilograms of carbon, that, yeah. you know, your, what your emissions are. Okay. You can also calculate that from your distance travelled and mm -hmm. look at, you know, how many miles per gallon your car does. Yeah. Or the train journey, etc. Once you've got that figure, you can choose to plant trees which offset that figure. Yeah. So, say it's... 10 tonnes of carbon mm -hmm. that you produce per year, you can then plant trees. So each tree is 57 kilograms of carbon. Wow. So then okay. you know how many trees you need to uh, right. set. That so so there. is that, but how, how, can, how do I know this? Is there a site or is there a place I can go to that will tell me? So for example, if that, if it, 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 it can ask me a question, it's okay, cool. How, how many miles do you do in a week? I'll put that in and it, it, will you tell me how many trees I need to plant? Well, you basically ask me at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but, I, yeah, but I, I know you, but I'm just saying for people who obviously watching or listening, yeah. if if they wanted to know what they obviously what they use in terms of that and how they can obviously replace that, is there a site they can go to? Yeah, there's so many carbon calculators okay. online. Yeah. You literally just type it in yeah. on Google and then you can work it out. And it just tells them and they can just basically... And, and yeah, with, there's and, ones for flights, there's one for cars, there's all sorts, so... The, um, there's a link on my website to WWF's one. Yeah, all right, brilliant. So we do ethical.org. Yeah, yep. again, yeah. So we'll put that out as well on the, on, the, on the YouTube thing. Yeah. Yeah, so you can find out for free what your carbon emissions are yeah. for the year. Yeah. So they ask you a lifestyle quiz, oh, and then you'll know sort of what you emit as yeah. an indi individual. So it's easy, it's easy to find, easy to access, yeah. and easy to obviously um, calculate as well. Yeah. That's great. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the site. It, it, you have on your site, we do ethical.org. That's another vlog again. 70,000 <laughs> trees to save the planet. And obviously you have a button that says pledge now. Can you um, explain more on that? Do we need 70,000 trees to save the planet right now? Or is that the target? 
So that was the target because the Queen, for her 70-year reign, yeah, yeah. chose We Do Ethical last year yeah, we gotta get the, yeah, yeah, to be in her official commemorative album. There we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Rest of the world, Queenie. Go yeah. on. Yeah. So I'm completely honoured by that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's for, I asked what, why? Because <laughs> I was like, why? <laughs> you didn't why ask why, why, did you? They said, for our far-reaching projects with the general public mm-hmm. over the past 10 years. So I, how did they I, find I, you? I, I literally just had a phone call from <gasps> um, Eliza Willis Crisp, her name was. Okay. Very well to do. Triple barrel. Yeah. Your name, yeah. Hello, Kelly. How'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was thinking of someone cranking. I was out walking Frankie at yeah. the beach and I was like, who is this? <laughs> and then she said, oh, I'll email you everything over. Wow. Um, the email didn't come through for like one day mm-hmm. and then two days. And I was thinking, this is strange. So I rang the number back and I got through mm-hmm. and yeah, she thought she'd sent it, but she hadn't. Uh-oh. She also <laughs> so then she sent it out <laughs> and I realised actually no, it was box. real. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. And um, they gave me a page, a full page feature interview yeah. um, in this history book. Wow. Essentially. So 70,000 trees to save the planet. So that was linked to the 70, 70 years F Jubilee thingy when she's still alive. Yeah, so we just set that target for yeah. the Queen's Jubilee. So there's, a, was, so there's an album. It's 50p to plant a tree for the Jubilee. That was our little thing. <laughs> and it is available to order as well. The album's available to order on the site. We do ethical.org. It looks good. Um, well done again for that. Um, so when you, when you we, we're now going to try, it's still linked to We Do Ethical. So you, you've got the Miss Dorset, Miss Bournemouth, you've been doing that for years, Mr. England. Um, what got you into that? It was, was that through the love of fashion as well? Because it's kind of linked. Yeah. And, and and how were you able to have start all those and then link it to the um, the ethical fashion, uh, fashion side of the industry and make it more fun um, for people who are obviously trying to compete or, or apply to compete? And also, once you you have um, the pageant down, um, what you did at the, with the host venues to get them involved with the same thing, fashion, beauty, but also being ethical towards it as well. How did that all come about to get all that linked in as well? Well, I was working for a PR company who took on the Miss World account. Mm-hmm. So Miss England is a licensee of the Miss World okay. brand, as are all of the other countries. Mm-hmm. There's about 120 countries involved. They're all licensees of the Miss World organisation. So I was at Embankment at their office with Julia Morley, who's basically the head of Miss World. Mm-hmm. She co-founded it with her husband yeah. many moons ago. Eric, I believe his name was. Eric Morley. So Angie Beasley, who's the director of Miss England, came to Embankment to meet me. Okay. And we all had a sit down and a chat about making Miss World more eco-friendly. All right. Now, at first, they sort of said to me, so, would you like to provide all the dresses for all the winners? (laughs) My heart dropped to the floor. Because I was like, ooh. Uh I was like, I can't make 120 dresses to that standard. I was like, "Um, no, um, thank you, but no, that's not really going to work. So, (laughs) we decided that working with Miss England, Mm -hmm. first and foremost, would be a good fit. Yeah, yeah. So I was asked to judge the final. Wow. Um, and that's how it all started. So I judged the Eco Award, which is, and wrote the brief, mm-hmm. which is sent out to 50 regional finalists across the country to upcycle an outfit mm-hmm. made from recycled materials. There and you I go. judged the contest, top 15 model it on the catwalk. Do you remember who won it? Yeah. Who? Karina Tyrrell. From? She's from London. Oh, was she, was she means London or just London? Cambridge. Cambridge, all right. And she worked, she's at Harvard, she's a doctor, oh, Harvard wow. University, worked on the AstraZeneca vaccine. Ooh. And I had that vaccine. And when I saw her at the Miss England finals just gone, mm-hmm. I said, thank you. Oh, bless, 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 yeah. bless. So then, so then, so you've got the Miss England bit, you've got that sewn in. Yeah. Um, and, and the Mr. England. And the Mr. Single-handedly England. Single-handedly found the last two Mr. England. <laughs> did you? have to say. Yeah. So, Jack wh- Ayers and Leah Muller. And where did, Miss, where, where, did, where did the Dorset side of it come in? Where, where did the Miss Dorset side of it, is that an offshoot from the Miss yes. England side of it? So they just asked me, um, unfortunately, Jackie Turner, who was a Miss England winner... Um, she? she used to run Miss Dorset. I met Jackie Turner years ago. She's moved yeah. to the States now. Is she? She does uh, fitness, I think. 
Oh, wow. Big up, Jackie. I think the last time I saw was probably part in the park at Ashley Cross 2014. If memory serves me right. She interviewed me at part in the park. I was DJing Aww. there. Yeah, yeah. Go on, sorry. Yeah, so she was looking after the Dorset region yeah. and um, she wasn't able to do it um, anymore. So Angie asked me if I'd like to. She's like, you're in Dorset. Would you like to do it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's how that started. So yeah, I first judged in 2014. So it's been a long time. Eight years ago. I've, I'm Eight like plus. part of the furniture. <laughs> can't get rid of me. <laughs> but then you've, you've done, because I think you like from what I've seen, you've, what, you, you, what you've done with it over the years, you have also... Um, taking them out uh, to do stuff. Um, one that springs to mind now is the Bournemouth Beach Glean. Oh, yeah. Beach, See, beach I do check things out. Yeah. Yeah, so, and our Hope for Food hope, uh, Oh, I didn't know about that. Go, go on, tell me about that. Well, um, every two weeks. I mean, I started off with the Miss England's and Miss Dorset. So we'd all bring down toiletries to hand out to the homeless. Okay. We'd do the soup kitchen mm -hmm. and collect clothes as well. One of the award rounds I did for Miss Dorset was... <laughs> A weigh-in of yeah. clothing. Wow. <laughs> we got five tonnes of clothing oh, wow. to recycle that we gave to the homeless and people in need. She needs to go to heaven, isn't it? That's a guarantee, like, straight, direct, <laughs> don't pass, go. <laughs> I thought, what can I get them doing to help, yeah. you know, with the projects that we do? And then, obviously, with the toiletries, mm -hmm. collecting toiletries, bringing them down to hand out yeah. once they have their hot meal served. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's been going, what, three years now, every two weeks? And when did he start the beach run side of it as well? Because obviously we know when he, go, when, he, when he gets to summertime, they all come to the cut, they all come from all over the country. <laughs> yeah, they get do. here. <laughs> they do. I can't <sighs> believe how many it's, people it's want nasty. to come and do a beach clean with me. And, uh, and just basically Berlin. just put, just litter the place. <laughs> uh, so did he just get up one day and, because he liked to go to the beach a lot, and, yeah. and just, you, you, you've gone down Admittedly, to Bournemouth beach, beach and you go, <laughs> oh, this place looks dirty. Right, let's get this place clean. I, I mean, what started it? Was it because it's always littered about? I think it's a really good activity to bring people together mm -hmm. to do something positive yeah. that relieves climate anxiety mm -hmm. because everyone's sort of anxious about, you know, the world's going to come to an end mm -hmm. and we can't do anything about it. Um, and it's a really good activity where you can engage with new people. You can talk to them and share ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or even not, if you don't want to. Yeah. So I did um, I did one with Dorset Mines. We got Bobbies of Bournemouth to sponsor. Thank you very much. They gave us a thousand pounds to do a beach clean on World Mental Health Day. Wow. And I gave five hundred pounds to Dorset Mind and work and ran it in partnership with them. Yeah. Five hundred for the tree pledge. Mm -hmm. So we split that. Um, but that's the kind of things I like to do. So yeah. I'll come up with an idea and then I'll get sort of people and you know, local businesses to support it and then make it happen. Yeah. And I think that stems from before where there wasn't much going on, so I had to make stuff happen. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to grab the bull by the horns and right, let's do this. Here, yeah. So let's make it. Okay. <laughs> so what what are the future projects you've got for obviously um we do ethical and um Miss Bournemouth, Miss Dorset, Miss England, Mr. England. What what's 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 coming up soon? What's oh. in the pipeline? Locally, there's a very exciting project. Okay. There's £2.4 million building that's been built at Durley Chine. Okay. Called the Eco Innovation Hub. Wow. So... Didn't even know that. Yeah, it's, it's What's not it gonna do? been launched yet. I was there yesterday. Yeah, it's Saturday today. <laughs> I was there yesterday yeah. meeting with the site manager. So our partnership, you know, we're sort of confirming what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. So I can't say too much. Okay, okay, that's cool. Uh, what I can say is that it's going to facilitate learning. Right. Um, the environment. The, the uh, schools. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I do some corporate litter picks. So for the last three years, I've done one with JP Morgan. Okay. So the staff come and join me. And it's a really good activity for well-being yeah. and health. Because yeah. obviously you're getting out mm -hmm. into, the, into nature, into the sunlight. Yeah. Um, you know, mixing with people and new people yeah. that you maybe or maybe didn't speak to before at yeah. work and different things like that. So I'd like to grow on that. Okay, okay. And also educate businesses because we do a lot of education with youngsters and schools. And that's um, good, yeah. They're yeah. the future, but, you know, by 2030, on the trajectory we currently are on, we're going to hit 1.5 degrees by 2030 and that's the wow. point of no return yeah 
So these eight-year-olds are only going to be like seven years away. That's then. seven years away. So we really need to work mm. with SMEs and corporates and people in industry now. Yeah. Talk about the now, yeah, yeah, now. yeah. And again, that's only going to happen if they learn about things and how to implement these things, wow. these new practices, mm -hmm. policies, also legislation. I mean, even if you're a landlord and you rent out properties in the next few years. <laughs> the rating is going to be going up. Yeah. You won't be able to let out your property unless it's got, say, a D rating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the EGC. Yeah. So there's all these things that people need to be sort of forward planning for. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it needs to happen quicker. As in yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it needs to happen quicker. So I really want to help them with um, educating yeah, SMEs, corporates. Yeah. So that's yeah, something oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and also with regards to... Um, the the Miss Bournemouth, Miss England. Uh, what's in the pipeline for them? What's what's oh. happening there? So, you know, any dates fixed or that we should know we should know about and look forward to? I'm still in two minds whether to actually do a regional event. Okay, I've got my own award round at the final, which mm -hmm. is the Climate King and Queen Award. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So obviously. I don't know because I've got a lot of other projects on. I'm actually developing my house that I live in okay. as well. So we're going to make it off grid. Oh, ooh, yeah, so <laughs> okay. you, so you, all it? these incredible solutions. <laughs> like I found roof tiles that are roof that are literally LED panels. Okay, but they just look like grey roof, like slate tiles. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a film you can put on the window that harnesses the UV. Yeah, that you see through the window like normal. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some estate projects i've got going on in dubai as well okay, yeah. so looking to help developers there be more eco-friendly mm -hmm. and that's good yeah. i've always done supply and procurement so yeah just sort of growing on projects that are going to make the biggest impact yeah yeah due to the time we have left <laughs> i think i think we all have in our own little way <laughs> if is we can all do something to contribute towards obviously um, keeping the environment or the world safe in terms of um, our, our, our carbon emissions, um, be more green as possible as we can. I'm not going to tell people to be veg vegetarian or vegan or not, but there are other things you can do. I think if we, if we look at what we can do ourselves individually and just contribute, it just all adds up to that big thing. Uh, you're also big on um, uh, mental health. Um, yeah. You're big on um, uh, health of the body as well. Yeah, um, I've seen a couple of posts you put out. I think the recent one was uh, you out in the sun. Something about being being out in the sun for fifteen minutes a day. Um, I can't remember the rest of it, but I remember looking at it a couple of days ago. Yeah, it helps your body maintain maintain your uh, calcium yeah. regulation. I mean, she's ninety five, so <laughs> look at her. So <laughs> I'm not being doing too badly. And there you go. So, what have you been doing with that? Um, is there any advice you can give people about in terms of? Um, like, the only thing I can tell people is just drink loads of water. That's yeah. it. Anything else you can add to that? Yeah, definitely. I think um, being plant-based mm -hmm. has a lot of benefits yeah. that I have seen myself. Um, I've got a connective tissue disorder okay. as well, mm -hmm. which not very many people probably know about. But it really does help with that as well because I'm hypermobile. So my joints are trying to move out of place. Ooh. But my muscle fascia is trying to hold them in place. Yeah, yeah. So basically, a bit like how scar tissue is created, yeah. fibrin, yeah, um, is a protein that sort of leaks in your joints, and it's it acts like sandpaper on your joints, and you get it's just joint great, pain. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's proteolytic enzymes in certain foods that you can take that actually remove that protein from your joints. So what foods are they pain. being? Like, just well, foods exam. that create it, number one, gluten. Okay. That's That really is not very good for people with any sort of joint condition, mm -hmm. whether it be EDS, which is what I have, mm -hmm. or it could be um, osteoporosis or rheumatoid arthritis. So any sort of joint aching condition that you might have, yeah. avoid gluten at all costs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I think yeah, gluten-free. Um, but the proteolytic enzyme foods that are rich in that are pineapple, um, papaya. Oh, I love that. I love them actually. Yeah, they're bromine. It's just more of that. Papin. Mm -hmm. They're uh, very good. No, I had that before. They're 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 what they are. What are inside those those proteolytic enzymes okay. inside those fruits? Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I we need to get you here more. 
Uh, I think that was great. I know Did a little you take about a lot. Of, a lot. Uh, uh, <laughs> I could go on for, for days. <laughs> Just keep asking me things. That, that <laughs> is fine, uh, and we will have you a lot more as well. Uh, definitely want to join the team. Before I let you go, we uh, we like to ask people. It's random, so you might have to take take a few seconds to think about it. Uh, we we add in a thing um, for season two and going forward called um, song or, or song of the week. What would you recommend? For this coming week, listeners and viewers to um, check out song wise, just the one could be from any era, any genre. Got you there, didn't I? I'd say any Bob Marley song. I just said one song. <laughs> <laughs> that's che- that's a cheap one code. love. One love. It's got to be one love. Big up there, one love. Let's get together and feel all right, isn't it? I had. Um, well, I had. Um, the privilege mm-hmm. of visiting Bob Marley's house okay. in Kingston in December, just gone. Just gone. Because I was a bridesmaid for my cousin's wedding. All right. So her husband is half Jamaican. So uh-huh. They had their wedding there. And uh, we did a tour and I was in his studio. And then the lady, the tour guide yeah. said, is there anyone here that can play the piano? Usually my sister, Robin, yeah. you know. Yeah, she's bigger the, Robin. She's yeah. the pianist yeah. of the family, but unfortunately she couldn't make it. So I was there, and I should put my cousin I. She pointed at me and said, "Kelly can." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Just Pre- about <laughs> pressure." Bob Marley's yard. I played the piano that they recorded a lot of the songs on. I've played Bob Marley's piano in his studio. Wow! I know <laughs> this is like my biggest. Accolade we have a Bob Marley topic coming as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. So, oh yeah. wow! And he um, was singing his songs in his house that he lived in. That's insane. That's that's cool. So on social media, can you tell people about where to find you and what you do as well? Just tell them. Sure. I'm. I started my Instagram a couple of years ago now. It's a bit of a late starter. Okay. But it's Kelly Lavelle official. Yeah, that's your Insta. E double L. Uh huh. And and we we do do ethical is we do ethical org all one word. We do ethical org all one word and Facebook for we do we do ethical. All the same. All the same. I made them all the same now. Brilliant. Much easier. So uh, (laughs) we do ethical org for Facebook and Instagram. We do ethical and Twitter. People still use that. Have you got TikTok? No. I, you know me, I have not been very good at social media my whole life. It's not something I focus on or have ever. Uh, we do ethical.org is the website. We do ethical.org uh, is for Facebook and Instagram. And also Kelly Lavelle official. One word is her Instagram as well. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs>